does this situation that is unfolding and uh, caveat here is that there is a, a lot of uncertainty associated with uh, what the future holds how does this narrative how does this change the narrative in in asia for uh, our economies yeah that's a good question and what it's really doing we can see through the the early financial market behavior is that um, you know, risk off is is really taking hold, and there's heightened uncertainty about how these tensions are going to potentially escalate and what that means. And so, um, you know, we've already seen oil prices, um, you know, rise, and that's obviously impacting, you know, APAC, given that most of APAC's largest economies are net oil importers. You know, we estimate that these Russia-Ukraine tensions have added about. 10 to $15 per barrel onto the spot price. And so if we continue to see tensions escalate such that there is supply disruptions to Russia's oil and gas supplies, then that will continue to add upward pressure to oil prices and then really hurt Asia's largest economies from a production point of view and from a consumption yes. point of view as well. Do you think, Katrina, this is building up to a stagflationary environment almost? I mean, that's certainly a risk, and the, the risk is only rising as these Russia-Ukraine tensions continue to escalate. And so that's that's really a, a heightened concern, and that would be particularly problematic for central banks across the globe, but including in APAC, because you know, central banks in APAC, for the most part, have been taking a, a measured approach to uh, monetary policy normalisation, whereas if we do see a sustained hike in oil prices, then those central banks would likely be forced to come off the sidelines more aggressively and hike rates to try and anchor those inflation expectations.